It's another year, and we have another year to kick off our studies and our chapel programs this year. And one thing you're going to find consistently throughout all of our chapels this year is this, this angle of this approach to understanding God's word from the perspective of his kingdom. Uh, our vision at Hollywood Christian School is that we will become a catalyst for world-class kingdom-centered education. And like I've mentioned before, one of the reasons why you hear me talk about that all the time is because that vision is what guides our operations. It's what, it's what points us in the direction God wants us to go in, and it helps us to make sure that we're staying, on fo staying focused on the things that God wants us to do as a school, and especially in your lives. There's nothing more important to us in this school than you and making sure that you're lined up to do God's will for your life. And so I, I repeat that vision because when we have our chapel program this year and we go through the services, I want you to know it's, it's more than just someone sitting up here, standing up here sharing with you. Uh, we are working towards becoming a kingdom-centered school. And if we're going to become a kingdom-centered school, we have to really and truly understand the kingdom. And one of my goals during this year is just to lay out what the kingdom of God is in plain, simple terms. I want to make it logical. I want to make it presentable, and I want to make it attainable for everybody in this room. So we're going to start from the beginning of the year all the way through the end of the year, and we're just going to lay this thing out and make it plain. Is that all right with you all? All right. Thank you so much. So that's our vision at school, and that's what we are, are trying to accomplish uh, here at HCS and in our chapel programs. And this morning uh, is going to just going to be somewhat of an introduction of, of, of where we're going. We... Um, we have a lot of information and a lot of different things that I want to just throw at you this morning. And then throughout the course of the year, we'll come back and we'll break everything down. So this morning, you're going to be loaded down with scriptures. Now, do know that during our subsequent chapel programs, you're going to have handouts. And I'm going to give you those handouts and ask you to answer those questions throughout the chapel programs. Uh, and then I'm going to ask, uh, Mr. what do, do y'all call Paul? Mr. R. All right, I'm going to ask Mr. R to take those for me and make those a part of your Bible grade. So chapel is going to be tied into your Bible lessons. Uh, I've even asked him, too, to kind of introduce you to where we're going maybe on Mondays so that it kind of gives you some background information. Because the problem with, with, with the chapel program is that it's not really long enough for me to talk about everything I need to talk about. I've spent years studying and teaching the kingdom of God, and it's just difficult to take all that information and, and everything that's in God's word and condense it down to about 15 or 20 minutes. It's very difficult to do. So if you come with the background information already, it's going to allow me to be able to focus on the high points, smooth things over, make it plain, and then just help us, help us to move through our chapter programs pretty quickly. So during next Tuesday, you'll be given a handout. Make sure that you're being alert, that you're paying attention, so that you'll be able to answer those questions. And I've asked Mr. R to make them a part of your Bible grade. So we're focusing on understanding the kingdom and particularly understanding God's design, his purpose, and his plans for his earthly kingdom. We don't oftentimes stop and think about it, but, you know, it's, it's possible for you to discern the mind of God. Now, we know that God is an infinite being. We can't contain all of God in ourselves. That's not possible because he's an infinite being and we're finite beings but it's possible for you to grasp the things that God reveals to you from his mind to your mind. Because the Bible says that no one knows the spirit of a man or no one knows the mind of a man except the spirit of a man. And you have the spirit of God living inside of you. And it's one of my passions to help you understand right, if God's spirit is living inside of me, then how do I allow God's spirit to reveal himself to me? How do I allow God to guide me? How do I allow, allow God to work in my life and fulfill the desires that, that he has for me to fulfill? And even so much, uh, simply put, how do I hear God? How do I know what God wants me to do? Uh, some of you in, in this room are in sixth grade. Some of you in this room are in 12th grade. But we're all after that same thing. We want to understand what God wants us to do and how we can apply it to our everyday lives. So we're going to be looking at design. And in all reality, I don't really care how far I get today. My main thing is kind of set us up uh, for what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be uh, laying out the concepts of God's kingdom all the way throughout this year. But it's very important that we understand this concept of how God's kingdom is designed. Because when you don't know the design of something, it's inevitable that you're going to abuse it. 
And when you start messing with God's design for something, you begin to distort the purpose of that thing. And when purpose is distorted, you begin to lose identity. We, we see this happening in our world right now in a very subtle sense. You have people who don't really know who they are. You, you have males who think they're females. You have females who think they're males. You have some people who don't have a clue what they are. You have people trying to figure things out and they don't know it. Because identity has been lost, because purpose has been distorted, because somebody misunderstood and began to mess up God's design. When God created the world, the, the Bible says that it was good and very good. Everybody say the word good. The word good means to be aligned with purpose and intention. So when God said that everything was good, he was saying that it is aligned with my purpose. And when he said it was very good, he's saying not only is it aligned with my purpose right now, but he's saying it's aligned with my purpose for all eternity. And so there was an eternal purpose that God had when he began to make the earth, when he began to make the heavens, and when he began to make you. There was a divine purpose set in place. And it is our desire throughout this year to understand that design and understand that purpose. Because when you look throughout the Bible, you see this concept of the kingdom all the way throughout. But if we don't understand the kingdom, then we can't understand God's design. And if we don't understand God's design, then we cannot understand God's purpose. And if we don't understand God's purpose, we're going to lose identity. That makes sense? So I got something I want you all to help me with this morning. I, uh, whenever I get the chance, I don't have a whole lot of free time in my life, but whenever I do get the chance, I do like to you know, do a few things other than standing up in front of people talking. So I brought a few things, and I want you to kind of help me understand what they are and what they are for. Now, to start with, I, I, is, is there a, a pretty bright young man in here? You consider yourself pretty, pretty smart, pretty... Nicholas? All right, come on up here, Nicholas. Come help me up. All right, y'all give Nicholas a hand as he comes. You know what? Because Nicholas came, I need to switch this. All right, because that first thing, he already knows what it is because he sees me use it. All right, so I, I have this. Now, normally I wouldn't let a student hold this, but, but since you're mine, you, you, you cut something off, it's your fault. Uh, but hold that, take, it, take a look at it, examine it, just observe it. Don't lose a finger. Take a look at it, and I want you to, to kind of tell me what you believe that this item is, is used for. What is it? It's a tool. It is a tool. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> it's meant for cutting. Okay. Now, let's stop there. How do you know it's meant for cutting? Because it's a blade. All right. So he sees a blade, and he knows it's for cutting. All right. What else you got? He's squeezing it, trying to see if that does anything. So he's squeezing it and nothing's happening. The, the blade isn't moving. Is the blade locked? Nope. It's meant for something and cutting. <laughs> meant for something and cutting. All right, y'all give Nicholas a hand. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. He, he is right, but, but here's, how, here's what he did. Nicholas looked at the design of this object to help him to understand what it was for because the purpose of something is hidden in its design. The purpose of something is hidden in its design, which means that your purpose is hidden where? In your design. Thank you, five people. It's hidden in your design. Nicholas is right. If I pull this open, that blade comes out. This is actually a pipe cutter. And what it does is it has a little platform right here where you can sit the pipe. And once you put your pipe here, it keeps it straight for you so you can cut a straight line. If, you, if the edge of a pipe is not straight and perfectly flat, when you go to connect everything back together, your water's going to leak out because the gap is not completely closed. So what you do is you work your blade down until it closes over your pipe and it 
cuts your flat in on your pipe and you can put your, your, water, your water line back together. Now, if I did not understand the design of this and how it worked and how it functioned, and let's say I, I don't know, did something crazy like put my finger up here and I began to work this blade down. Now, you're thinking this, this guy must be pretty dumb, right? to be doing something like this. If, if I keep doing this, what's going to happen? I'm going to cut my thumb off, right? Do you know that your life is the same way? If you don't understand how your life is designed, you are bound to lose it. If you don't know how your life is designed, how God made you, how he struck at you, then you are designed to lose that very life. This is why it's important that we understand how God made us, how God made his kingdom, how God made this world in which we live. This is why your education is so important. Your education is important because it helps you to understand God's design. Not just his design for spiritual things, but God wants you to understand how the world of medicine is designed. God wants you to understand how the world of law is designed. God wants you to understand how social media is designed. God wants you to understand how mathematics are designed. Because the more I understand about design, the better I can understand purpose. And the better I understand purpose, the better I understand identity. The better I know my identity, the better I can live out my true calling. And there is no better place in life to be than in the center of God's will. Y'all clap right there. That was good stuff. Even if I got to preach to myself, this stuff is good. And now I don't have enough time to talk about everything this morning, but I do want to kind of lay out how the rest of this year is going to go. Let me, let me try something else. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I can trick these high school people. Let's see. All right, let me get a, um, a ninth grade female. Who's a ninth grade female in here that doesn't mind being a little bit embarrassed? Where is ninth grade? This is how I work. I either do volunteer or victim. So either I get a volunteer or I choose a victim. Where's ninth grade? Where's ninth grade? Ninth grade is hiding from me. What, what grade are you in? You're in eighth grade. Okay, I want an eighth grade girl. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on. What's your name? Annie. Say it again. Annie. Annie. All right, this is Annie. Say hi, Annie. Hi, Annie. All right. Annie, I want you to take a look at this. Observe it. Tell me what you think. It's used to measure. Used to measure? How do you know? Okay, so she sees numbers on it, and she knows it's used to measure. What, do you, what, what would it measure? A large object. A large object. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Thank you so much. Y'all give, give her a hand. All right. Now, this can be used to measure, but I, I kind of wanted to trick her on this one. Um, you know, this is actually a square. I know you look at it and you think it's shaped like a what? Triangle. But, but this is really and truly a square. This is called a square. It's shaped like a triangle, but it's called a square. And the reason why is because it helps you to determine, number one, whether or not something is square. I know that this right here is a perfect 90 degree angle. So if I put it up against anything that has a horizontal edge to it, if they don't line up perfectly, then I know that this thing is not straight. It's not making a square. If it's out like this or if it's in too far, my, my square is being pushed in, I know it's not straight. It, it, it can also be used to help you create a straight line or help you to create a square. So it's called a square. It just happened to be shaped like a triangle because I only have one half of it. My point in showing you this is that sometimes things are not always what they seem. Sometimes you can look at something and think you know what it's for and think you know what it is, but you can be just a little bit misled. She, she looked at this and she said, I noticed that there are numbers on here and they can be used for measurement, and that's true. The, the thing about it is that's only partially true. And the situation all the time we find ourselves in life, especially when we're young, is that we get to the point where we, we see enough things in this world and we know enough of it and we by accident, think that we know it all. I know a few things about it, 
and I think I've got everything figured out. That's always a dangerous place to be in. And, and life when you're young is just like that. Some of you sitting in this room right now, I'm not saying that you think you are a know-it-all, but, but you, you think you got it figured out. You think you, you know what to do. You think you, you know what you're doing right now. The Bible says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof leads to death. In other words, there's a way that can seem right to you, but if you keep making that decision, it's going to lead you down the wrong path. So what I need to do is make sure I understand everything about how this works, how it's designed, and how it's supposed to function so that I can use it according to God's will. Your life is the same way. You want to understand as much about your life as possible. Our goal is to help you to understand the design and the purpose and the plan of God's kingdom so well that you figure it out, that you get it for your life, and you're able to apply it successfully over and over and over again. Now, why are we so fanatic about this? I want to share just a few scriptures with you this morning just to kind of help you understand why we're so fanatic about this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says this, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Two things there. One, you were created in the image of God. Now, I think I've said this to you before, but since you are created in the image of God, that actually make God more real than you. And I want to prove it to you. All right. This is your typical mirror. What I need now is a, a handsome young man. Reggie. Oh. <laughs> I heard Reggie. Come on, Reggie. I won't make fun of you. I won't make fun of you, I promise. This, this is a home. This one won't embarrass you at all. <laughs> it's all right. Thank you so much for volunteering, Reggie. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, Reggie, stand in front of this mirror for me. All right, we have two things here. We have Reggie. I can touch Reggie. I can see Reggie. He, this is Reggie. This is the real Reggie. The second thing we have is an image of Reggie. So we have Reggie right here, and we have his image in the mirror. One of these things I can touch, I can feel, I can hear, I can dance with, I can laugh with, I can joke around with. One of these things is very, 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 very tangible. One of them is not. Let me ask you something. Which in this situation is more real, Reggie or his image? It's not a trick question. Reggie, he's here, he's right here, I can see him. This is Reggie. But I, I can't do anything with his image. Reggie is more real than his image. Thank you, Reggie. You can have a seat. All right, give Reggie a hand. All right. So here's my point in telling you that. Since you were created in the image of God, God is more real than you because you are his image. That means that I really need to work hard to make sure that I understand who God is because I can't understand myself until I understand God because God designed me in his image. And if I don't understand design or if I begin to mess with design, I begin to distort the purpose. And if I distort the purpose of something, I'm going to begin to distort the identity of something. Any of y'all ever had something that was broken and you tried to fix it? And when you tried to fix it, you made it worse? Yeah. And now it don't work at all? <laughs> because you didn't understand the design. Because you didn't understand how something was designed and you try to fix it, you're going to make it worse. Life is just like that. 
I need to know and understand my design and my makeup. Because God said, not only was I designed in his image, but I was created to have dominion in this world. Now, dominion don't mean you go around bossing everybody around. It doesn't mean you have uh, millions of, of mansions all over the world. It doesn't mean that. Dominion is just a big word for leadership. It means that you were designed to be a leader. How, how many of you, for example, like it when folks are always trying to tell you what to do? Anybody like that? Is somebody always trying to tell you what to do and boss you around? You, you don't like that. H how many of you like to be tied up, hands and feet? Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to be tied up all the time. Nobody wants to be entrapped. We like to be free, and we prefer freedom, right? And so you were designed by God to be a leader. There's something inside of you that can't stand it when you can't lead, that can't stand it when you're not being great, that there's something inside of you that wants to be recognized, that wants to be viewed as important, that even wants to be famous. Fame is just a distorted version of dominion because people take fame and they, they, they highlight it because it makes people feel good, it makes people feel popular. Fame is just a distorted version of dominion. Dominion is more important than fame. It's more important that I master my life. It's more important that I be skillful at what I do and be recognized for my skill than it is for me to be famous. That makes sense. So we need to understand design, amen? Let me share a few more scriptures with you and I'm gonna let you go. I know my teachers are ready to get you back to class. Here's one of the most important scriptures I can share with you today, if I can't share anything else, just to highlight how important this is. You hear me use this verse a lot, so I'm gonna give it to you now. Jesus said in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God. Everybody say first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Now, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. To seek means to study, to, to, to pursue, to be preoccupied with. So what Jesus is simply understand, he's saying, before you do anything, understand the design of God's kingdom. Before you worry about getting a girlfriend, before you worry about getting a boyfriend, before you worry about getting famous, before you worry about owning a whole lot of possessions, before you worry about your, your MBA career, before you worry about trying to get in the NFL, whatever it is, doesn't matter. He says, before you do any of that, understand how God's kingdom is designed because your identity is tucked away in that. So that's why we're gonna work fanatically to make sure that we get God's kingdom before anything else. 